All right, we are live with another episode of the Blue Crocus Experience, and I have today with me uh, Judd Burden. He's got uh, too many companies uh, to list off that he's owner and co-owner and president of, so um, hopefully we'll get to learn a bit about that today. But basically what I do here, Judd, is you know just dive in, start, start an easy conversation, chat about uh, where, you, where you've come from, what you're up to. Um, so maybe just, maybe just fire off uh, with that right now. Cool. Uh, I'm a 40 year old beach bum. That's the truth. Um, if I had a choice, I'd be under a coconut tree and uh, my surfboard and just kind of hang out and think of cool crafty ideas. But, uh, I love it. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, children and family and, and challenges in life have kind of pushed me towards, towards uh, solving, solving problems and really just continuing to uh, continuing to help people and pay it forward, so to speak. But yeah, it's been quite a journey, man. I started uh, my entrepreneurial adventure when I was, uh, I guess I would have been 18. I uh, started my own seal coating business yep. and fed my family uh, by, by uh, seal coating driveways, repairing cracks and, and essentially going door to door, grew the business and uh, grew the business significantly. We ended up with a total of 48 people working for wow. us within two years and uh, sold it when it was 23, five years later. Basically, I uh, went for a walk with dad and dad was like, you know, do you really want to be, do you really want to be doing the grind from five o'clock in the morning till, you know, 11, 1130 PM coming home with your children sleeping in bed and missing them growing up? And I said, well, no, I'd love to be able to work from home and do that stuff. The funny thing is that I still wake up at five and I go to bed at 1130. I just have more time with the family because I yeah. work from home. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's been uh, it's been a real adventure and listen you know by by all means uh, in every way that I say this knocking on doors and seal coating driveways were some of the most favorite years of my life and um, when I get back and I you know start sealing cracks and seal coating it brings me back to a really happy place uh, because it's the roots of of where I planted my my first business, like it was literally that raw hustle, raw hustle, grinding, learning, accounting, marketing, sales, branding, uh, customer service. I mean, just every angle of business. It was like drinking out of a fire hose at the age of eighteen when you're coming from, uh, you know, a, a family that was we were we my family did quite well growing up and uh, and put us through private school and those kind of things, but. Um, kind of always had it silver plattered as a, as a kid growing up, I did. Um, and then, you know, my first job was bagging groceries and it was like $120 a week or something. And it was like, who cares about the 120 mom and dad have money anyway, we're going to yeah. be all right. And so you, you, you work, but you don't learn true hustle until you actually are cut off from those, from those money streams that, uh, that are kind of gifted to you in a way, um, or enabling you, I could call it. Um, yeah. Mom, dad, I love you. Uh, so, so, you know, it basically came down to, you know, if I didn't go and knock on the doors, if I didn't go and grind and really just actually get to work, uh, I wouldn't be able to feed, feed my family. And was that a, was that a bit of a, a shocking transition? I mean, huge, right? You yeah. go from board, boarding school, high school, like 35 grand a year just for education and housing and all that stuff to, you know, silver plattered. Yeah, I want to go buy some Reebok pumps back in the day. If anybody remembers Reebok yeah. pumps, you're, you're probably as old as I am. But uh, um, I'm not actually. And you know Reebok pumps? Well, I've heard of them. I think, they're, I think they might be coming back in like a retro sort of form. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a, it was a sense of rea it was a sense of a new reality. And the new reality was that you actually needed to fucking grind in order to actually make fucking things happen. And excuse the way I say that, but it's the bottom line. It's raw, it's rooted, it's bloody, and it is filled with tears. And it is, it is not easy being an entrepreneur. Um, exactly. But man, do we love to dream. And so that whole, that whole journey from the, the very first time that I started knocking on doors to selling the business, moving to the Caribbean, I had five years of entrepreneurial experience and blood, sweat, tears um, that I, was, I had built enough armor and, and experience to move on to my next, 
my next next endeavor and that was that was related to the asphalt maintenance industry and still is today but that was asphalt kingdom going back you know 17 years ago when i first registered the domain and what happened what happened was that business uh, asphalt kingdom the business is very similar to knocking on doors it's just that we're knocking on not physical doors we're knocking on virtual doors through search engine optimization through you know um through call to actions that we've got on our website courses video content and uh, social media content that's pouring constantly retargeting campaigns so basically that was that was a different version of knocking on the door it was pounding on the keyboard literally creating our own music not really music but banging on the keyboard as though yeah. it sounded like some type of music for someone but yeah. at the end of the day, every letter that we typed every space bar that we pushed every enter that we we spaced out a paragraph and every copy and paste every angle of what we were doing took action it was all mentally processed framework built and action no different than you know, I'm going to sit in my house today. It's sunny outside. I'm not going to do any uh, door knocking for my asphalt maintenance business. I'm probably not going to get any new business in the door, especially if I'm not sitting here pounding on my keyword, doing social campaigns and, you know, doing some online search engine optimization and doing, doing those things. If I'm just going to sit still and stagnant, I'm probably going to just remain still and stagnant with the same shitty results. Yeah. So you, you either go and you do it or you don't. And I think there's, there's a lot of people watching this that probably can get stuck into situations where, you know, there's a global pandemic. There's a lot of shit going on in our, in our lives right now. But the reality of it is it's either going to be a bullet and it's going to paralyze you or it's going to be something that's going to smack you across the face and say, time to wake up and it's time to uh, take some action here and, and leverage what we can right now to uh, to make ourselves, you know, fly fly further and and stronger. Yeah, no, and that's that kind of that's exactly why I wanted to have you on. Um, it's funny you, you say that you thought I was your age because of, of the reference there. I'm actually only 27, um, and uh, so when I've been like connecting with different people in the asphalt industry, you know, you're very very active on the socials. Um, uh, Facebook is mainly where I'm where I'm living right now, but you know, you're always sharing podcasts that you're doing and stuff like that. Uh, and I was on with Marvin, uh, Marvin Joles and, uh, awesome guy. both of the, uh, both of the Keith Calloway's, um, senior and junior. And, uh, and so they were like, you gotta, you gotta get Judd on here. Um, and, and basically my, my reason for doing the podcast is it's a way to, for me to connect with people in the industry. Um, I'm coming from more of a marketing and lead generation perspective. Um, but it's a way for me to connect, uh, without a sales pitch, it's a way for me to connect and learn, right? Like um, every every person I've had on the podcast, I've learned something that affects my business and, and helps me, you know, to grind better and, and work harder. Um, and and so, you know, selfishly, that's ex exactly why I'm having having you on and having everybody on. So, sure. um, good for you, man. Yeah, no, it, it's been it's been really fun. I think I've been doing it like a month now, um, and I've met some amazing people, and I, I'm super excited for where this is going to go. Um, but so you started, you know, you started a long time ago, uh, in, you know, the door knocking, um, talk to me like where you've been since then and what, you know, cause I, I know you have uh, a retreat that you do as, as well, right? Called gold digger. Gold digger, G O A L. Yeah. Gold digger yeah. retreat. Um, I mean, we've got a lot of different companies now, but I mean, we've got car dealerships, we have car rental fleets, we've got, uh, we're, we're in the lending business. We've got, uh, We've got a water sports company, the number one rated kiteboarding academy in the world right now. Nice. We've got uh, we've got an Airbnb brokerage business. We have a digital marketing agency. We've got there's a lot of different things going on. Serial uh, entrepreneur then. We have Action Seal in Canada, ActionSeal.com, which is our Canadian sister company of Asphalt Kingdom in the U.S. and global. Um, yeah, and, and are you you're from Canada originally? Yeah, I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in New Brunswick. So, so I grew up speaking English and then broken French. So je parle français beaucoup. <laughs> I don't really speak that much French. <laughs> we actually have a, we actually have a facility uh, in Dieppe, New Brunswick, just outside of. Oh, Brooklyn. cool! Yeah. That's awesome. So, like a, a reseller, basically. Uh, not a reseller. We actually have a warehouse, a drop shipping facility there. So we stock a lot of material there, and we handle all of the Maritimes out of that location. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, multiple locations. We actually have we have Dieppe, New Brunswick, and then or yeah, New Brunswick, and then we have uh, 
Quebec, Drummondville, Quebec, and then we've got Calgary, and um, and now we're just in the middle. Of, it's not really public information, but it's kind of public now. It but is like now. <laughs> another another nine locations. So things That's are amazing. happening happening quickly. All depots, pickup depots, and fulfillment locations, and then. In the U.S., there is uh, there are monster things happening right as I say this right now. So some really That's cool exciting. things, and it's all it's all about problem solving. I mean, we have we have customers that we've helped start businesses. A lot of people we've helped start businesses over the years, and uh, we have a lot of people who we haven't helped start businesses, but they are they are dealing with challenges that are uh, that they're faced with every day, regardless of whether they started with us or not, and we have a responsibility to connect people with the solutions, um, especially in these days of age, the, this day and age where technology is all at our fingertips. So we can make things happen very quickly and save a lot of money. There's a lot of uh, brokerage businesses out there for shipping and logistics and everything. And you can, you can line your, your customers pockets with money instead of the shipping companies that are making 400, 500, billion dollars a year yeah um, exactly. and so what we do is we really try to save people money provide them with over the top customer uh customer experience and service and yeah that's i mean that's very obvious by by looking at what you guys are doing online as well like you're, you're definitely coming through and you know everybody speaks well of basketball kingdom and and what you're doing so thanks man yeah we're working hard on it it's not it hasn't been an easy road brother it, I, mean, about we, that. I mean listen in life in life sometimes you are you go through, through certain emotional um, journeys that change the way that you um, communicate and deal with people, like yep. straight out, and what you're really hungry for. You know, back in the back in the asphalt days when I was raking, looting, and like like literally stealing cracks. Yeah. You know, it was how how full could I get my pockets by the end of the day? Not with chunky asphalt, but with with black gold with money yeah. and front pockets would be full overflowing out of the front pockets out of the back and I'd be covered in tar and I would get home and my wife and my son, Justin, who's now 21 turning 21, um, you know, they'd be both sleeping and, and that was, that was what I was hungry for yeah. at that yeah. time. And then as asphalt kingdom started developing, it was all about the margin. How much margin can you make? How, how many sales can you make revenue goals like money, 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 money. How fast can I make this amount of money? Whereas, um, you know, a time hits where you have this emotional footprint just completely gets stamped into your soul, which is where my, uh, this is three years ago, our business changed three years ago, dramatically from where it was to where it is now it, with a snap of the fingers. And it was when our son was, uh, Theo was born in St. Martin mm -hmm. and, uh, and he basically passed away in front of us. And so stop breathing, full respiratory failure, full cardiovascular failure, like complete flat line in front of us. And seven minutes goes by and the doctors basically pronounce him dead and hand him, want to hand him to my wife to hold in her arms to say yeah. goodbye. Yeah. And like some heavy shit, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and I'm broken looking at her balling. She's balling. She's not going to hold the baby. She runs out of the room. I run out of the room, baby laying on the table, laying there flat. And we run into a room to go mourn his death. This is Theo, yeah. Yeah. who's now three years old and a blonde kid running around downstairs. So it's quite crazy, right? So we go to mourn his death. We come back in the room where, or I go back to the room to find out what we're going to do with the body. The kid's alive like our son is alive and wow. the doctor's looking at, there's two doctors and they're looking at him saying, it's a miracle. We don't understand the intubation must have something happened. And he, he's alive. We don't know what kind of condition he's in, but he's alive. So my wife and him fly to Bucaramanga, Colombia, spend, spend three and a half weeks there. So they flew on a private jet, a medical jet. I flew in the next day because there wasn't enough space for me on the jet. I spent three weeks in Colombia reviving him. Uh, basically wow. nurturing and bringing so this, this him happened when he was like first born this three years ago this is like two days after he was born wow I, I have an 11 month old and so that that hits really close to home yeah and 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 just hold them tight man but like that that moment that moment in my life I looked in the mirror when I was at the in the bathroom at the hospital and I looked in the mirror and I said it's not about the money it's not the money can't keep this child alive. 
people will keep that child alive mm -hmm. by using systems and you know yes money for equipment and all that but it it requires people it requires praying it it requires energy it requires it requires holding hands it requires the love the power that we create as human beings to to enjoy this journey that we're on the money for me became irrelevant what i started to focus on was helping people and changing lives and contributing donating time and spending that time and just consistently going at this positive angle that i that i that i've been at and it's incredible what's taken place because you go from a place of focused on money where people aren't as as interested in building relationships yeah. to actually caring about people and loving and building relationships and nurturing them and calling people and messaging. And I know a lot of people who will end up watching this that will say, Judd pings me. And yeah, absolutely. what's up? Like same with you and I, right? Like we just touch me like, yeah. and that's, and that's how these kind of things happen is, is open communication. So I would say three years ago, everything changed with our company, the culture, uh, the mission statement is pay it forward. We are not geared towards the world's best. Like, forget all that. It's not about us. It's about the people that we work with every single day. And we're getting that feedback too. So we're stoked to be changing lives right now, now man. It's, it's yeah. Really I mean, just to, to circle back to your story there, I, we kind of glossed over that. <laughs> Uh, and went on to your company, but I mean, dude, I'm getting chills over here because that, you know, I, like I said, that it's that it's close to home for for me and my wife. Um, our, our son just turned 11 months old today, um, and it's it's been amazing. Happy birthday! Yeah, yeah, no. So that that's a that is quite a shocker um, for you, obviously, in a very very pivotal moment. Um, so so you've you've changed all of that, and and you're obviously seeing results from you know. Connecting so that's when he was first born. Yeah. Um, here, let me find another picture. But this is like, yeah, here you go, man. This is like literally, this is, this gives me chills, man. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So that's it gives crazy. me chills to, to see that, but then to like, Every day that you see him is just like puts everything in perspective, right? Every day that I see anybody that I love or that I'm creating relationships with, man, it's, listen, you know, this, this COVID thing and this global pandemic that we're dealing with, it sucks. It's shitty. Yeah. But if you stop picking up the phone and you stop communicating with, with people and you stop helping people, it's way shittier. Man, I've uh, I've connected with so many more people actually in the last couple of months than I than I was doing before, um, and I, like I plan to keep that up. It's been amazing for me, and I, I think people have have enjoyed it as well. Um, but I mean, connect with people, like you say. So so you you had that pivotal moment, and you, and you kind of shifted everything. It sounds like I mean, it sounds like money was the the entire reason you were like doing everything. You pivoted to working with people, so now. Talk to me a bit about what, you know, paying it forward, giving back, connecting looks like. Yeah, it's, it's, I want more people to feel the way that I feel. Like I feel unstoppable. Yep. You can take everything away from me right now. Everything, every, every, my home, except for my family. Right. Not my, I don't want my family gone, but you could take every material item away from me right now. You could remove all the businesses that I have and I would wake up tomorrow morning, mark my words, I would wake up tomorrow morning and I would immediately start sketching out different ideas, passions, things, the experiences that I have and start jotting them down on the paper. And I'd start analyzing each one and determining what kind of traffic potentials around those different ideas. I'd start doing some keyword research. I'd start looking in social. I'd start probably looking at Amazon, the Facebook marketplaces. I'd start to look at Kijiji, Craigslist. I'd start to look at Hot Frog. I'd start doing some some exploring really, really quickly to determine what business or dream that I was going to build next. And yeah. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of that. So I think that, um, you know, the stuff about paying it forward is, is helping people feel unstoppable as well. And when you have, when you have the right circle, the right, the right, in, you know, the, the right people that you're connected with, the feeling of being unstoppable is, is totally achievable. Um, in addition to that, you need to be plugged into the right resources as well to be able to move forward with whatever 
whatever plan that you're setting up and wanting to execute on, you need to have the right pieces of technology at your fingertips. You need to have, um, you need to have the right tools, but first and foremost, you need to have the, you have to, you have to be able to look in the mirror and, and look yourself in the eyes and have that self love. You have to have that discipline, that, de that determination, that, that is, that is, I'm, I'm, I'm going for this, man. Like I am going to do this yeah. and I'm not going to do it alone. Yeah. I'm going to do it with people who love, care and respect me because I've built relationships and nurtured them that those people are the people that I'm connected to now that allow me to have the momentum to move forward with my journey that I I'm setting up for myself. And so if you don't, if you don't have a circle, if you don't have the right people, i.e. everybody, USA Steel Coders, Asphalt Steel Coding Coalition, Asphalt Kingdom, my personal page, Lewis page. I mean, the reality of it is plug into the right sockets with the right people, the right communities, and all of a sudden things start to change. They start to happen. It's not going to happen for you, but they'll give you that fuel that you need in order to actually take action, i.e. knock on a door i.e. register a domain name, i.e. whatever it is, right? Like yeah. just action, action. I love it. I mean, uh, I recently kind of did a mind dump about, you know, imperfect action is better than inaction, right? You know, everyone's paralyzed by, well, it's my, what if it's not good? What if it fails? But just, just get out there and do something, you know, surround yourself with the right people, um, you know, put a plan in place, but then do it, execute on the plan. Um, so if someone was starting a business from, you know, very young in the business, I know there's a lot of people who are listening that are in different businesses that are, that are young and, and starting out. What would you say are, you know, three key things that they should pay attention to aside from, you know, obviously plugging into the relevant resources. First key thing, get some exercise, get some exercise, man. Go if, kite you can, if you go kiteboarding, do, yeah. do, do something, do something first thing in the morning, get active, man. You listen, if you, if you have a fuel filter in a car that's blocked and that fuel can't feed that engine, when you push on that gas pedal or for anybody who drives, rides two strokes and stuff, what happens when you can't get the right fuel feed? You're, you're dead in the water. You're bogging down, man. You're bogging down. You're slow. What do you have in your head? You have an a, engine. Yeah. An engine, a brain, yeah. man. There's, there's tissue up there. There's filtering opportunity. If you get that blood flowing quickly, what happens? That blood gets moving, you get energized, you feel good, you feel strong, you're loosened up, and now you're ready to start to challenge what it is that you've set forward for yourself. So first I thing I would say, I would say exercise. Second thing is cut out sugar out of your diet. <laughs> people are That's people a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> people, 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 are, people are expecting me to say all kinds of different things right now. Entrepreneur, this. Well, so what sort of this, health that did you bring on the show? I, I'm telling you, man, cut exercise cut out the sugar straight out like i'm talking bleached white crap sugar like yep. if you're sitting there drinking coca-cola throw it away don't you don't need that shit what it does and scientifically proven to put fog in your head which prevents you from uh, prevents you from thinking clearly and being motivated on the things that you're set to achieve you're yep. setting them yeah, other, otherwise otherwise you're going to be fogged and i don't like being fogged anybody who's ever drank a lot of in in, in a night and wakes up the next morning with a hangover can you work really well when you're hungover? Nah, it sucks, right? So same kind of concept here. That, and then I would say the third thing is, the third thing is to truly do something that you're as passionate about as you possibly can. Passion, and that's a very broad, it's a very broad uh, recommendation, but the reality of it is if you're not passionate about it, if you're not truly feeling good about it you're just not going to feel you're not going to feel the motivation you're not going to feel a natural it's like a natural feeling you're not going to feel the same kind of dopamine rushes you're not going to feel feel like you can actually accomplish it unless you truly love it i'll give you an example i learned how to kite surf kiteboard whatever you want to call it yeah. i learned how to kiteboard on the beach and and i learned the sport and I start to ride and I bust my ass over time after time after time. But I loved it. Like I, I wanted to learn how to kiteboard. I really, yep. there was nothing that was going to stop me from kiteboarding unless I got a huge injury, right? Yep. Which, which I've had many of since then. <laughs> but, but the reality of it is I go kiteboarding. 
and I ride. And I feel the feeling of surfing across the water with the wind pulling you along. And I'm doing 25 miles an hour on the water, whatever, 40 kilometers an hour. And I'm cruising across this water. And I'm like, this feels incredible. It feels great. Not just physically, but now I've got the dopamine rush because there's accomplishment. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, I want more. I want more. Yeah. People have heard of adrenaline junkies. I'm a total adrenaline junkie. I can't get enough, right? So yeah. I literally go from riding to jumping two feet off the water, three feet, ah, backflip, front roll, this, that, the other thing. And eventually you're floating 40, 50 feet in the air for 250 feet in distance. But that was all, that was all, um, that was all part of my personal building of, a, of, a, of an experience that I carry for the rest of my lifetime. No one told you to do that. Nobody told me to yeah. do it. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, kiteboarding and people would come up to me on the beach and they'd be like, you know anybody who teaches this? I said, oh, no, not really. Will you teach me? Not really. I mean, I do this for my balance. <laughs> I don't really want to teach you how to kite. I do want to teach you how to kiteboard, but I do this for my own pleasure. And then more people are asking. And then the hotels start calling me on my cell phone, Four Seasons in Capsuluk, and they're saying, well, can you maybe hire an instructor? I'm like, absolutely, I can hire an instructor. <laughs> I have, two, I have two different things I can, well, actually, when they asked me that question, I had two options. One is, no, I'm not going to hire an instructor. Or two, I'm going to get on Facebook and I'm going to post an ad in the kiteboarding groups and I'm going to start looking for a level one kiteboarding instructor that's IK, IKO certified. And so that's what I did. I took action. I said, I'm going to go find someone. Within 24 hours, I had somebody on my Skype, Miguel, who's still with us today, six years later, and his brother, Yanni. That's awesome. Um, and, and, um, and so I got on Skype with him and I said, listen, we're going to build a world-class kiteboarding academy in Anguilla. You're in Dominican Republic right now. No problem. What I'm going to do is, you know, we went through the interview process. It was whatever, a day or two. And then I said, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy you your plane ticket and I'm going to fly you from there over to here. And you're going to help me to start building this kiteboarding school. And we started doing it together. And we started building this kiteboarding academy. And so the hotels would now call and they'd be able to get my wife who answers the phone to book the lessons. And it's $150 an hour, right? For eight hours a day, each yep. instructor. So people can do the math a little bit on that one. Yep. And so we start to build a business. So what I would say to people on that point number three, first was exercise, second was sugar, three was actually just, just choosing to do it like actually just making the choice to do it relating to some, relating to something that you're passionate about. Yeah. So that third, that third thing is you're going to come to the why it's going to be yes or no. It's which direction are you going to go? And when you say you're going to go, don't just fucking like, don't just kind of do it. Kinda, yeah. Like go drink from the fire hose. Yeah. And go, go until you're blue in the face. Be smart about it. Be intelligent about it. Don't go and spend a hundred thousand dollars on something, but invest. Don't spend. Invest into things incrementally. See an ROI and continue to develop it. You think we hired two instructors right out of the gate, or we waited for some demand to pick up to hire the, ins the second instructor? You went for it. Do you think? Do you think that we we bought twenty paddle boards just out of the gate without knowing whether or not the hotels were going to promote it? No, we bought the paddle boards, twenty four thousand bucks worth of paddle boards, right? Twenty four thousand dollars of paddle boards that are brought here, plus another seven glass bottom kayaks, plus forty thousand dollars worth of kite gear, plus an an inflatable water park that was the biggest one in the Caribbean that was like a huge, crazy obstacle course, like wipeout style. But we did all that not because. I was going into it a little bit or I was going to fake it. I, I was going in yeah. and doing it. So yeah, that would be my third piece. It's probably, it's, it's the, it's the most important one is the, is the direction that you're going to go and stay committed to it and follow it through. You know, so what happens, what happens when, you know, stuff, you know, just doesn't seem you lose motivation. What would you say to people who are losing motivation or things just don't seem to be going well? What, what do you say to them then? Brother, my phone pinged literally right before I hopped on this, literally while we were, while I was hopping on. Yeah. And I have, I have somebody who was feeling that way. Yeah. That is a close person to me that I'm plugged into and they're plugged into me. And they're yeah. a part of that circle that we've developed. 
Yep. And when I say the circle that we've developed, I'm talking whatever your circle is and whatever everybody else's circle is, just have one. Get yep. one. If you don't have one, find one, build one, like build one. And this person is dealing with some shit right now. Yep. And so they didn't just sit still in a dark room and drink some booze and like smoke cigarettes in a corner. They're calling, reaching out when they need help. They're pushing the SOS, man. We need some help. Yeah. We need some energy. We need some fuel, some fire, some desire to take ourselves to the next level. And right now that person is not going to stay in that ditch slumped over for very long because the circle now all knows because I've already messaged them saying, reach out now. Yeah. That's it's awesome. an, it's 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 a beacon, man. It's an alert. Yeah. If I'm feeling, I've goosebumps talking about this shit because yeah. it's so important, dude. If you're yeah. alone, yeah. if you're alone, you're alone. Like I'm watching a lot of guys on social media right now. A lot of guys, and when I say a lot of guys, they're seen as a lot of guys. There are a handful of dudes right now that are literally talking about just hustle. It's all about you. It's all all about you. Do it alone. Nobody else is going to do it for you. I agree up to a certain point. Yeah. But what, ha what happens when you're fucked up and you need some true help? Sorry for all the cussing on this, but it's so okay. true, dude. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be transparent, is that if you're alone, you're alone. If you're with a team that is interested in your true well-being and the best outcome for you and your family without having monetary connections to it in yeah. the assistance and the advice and the help they're giving, but instead organic, pure team, Dude, I'm sorry, man. The reason why I am where I am right now today is not because of me. It's because of myself and a team that we've built that allow me to feel every morning that I wake up that I'm unstoppable. I every it. morning, dude. Every morning. If I, if I lost everything tomorrow, like I said, everything. I know I could call people right now. I'd be, I'd be on a new mission immediately because that circle would want me working with them immediately. My yeah. teams would be able to work for them. Like it's literally that teamwork is so crucially important. It's not about your paver. It's not about your steamroller. It's not about your spray system or your crack repair machine or your big fancy striper. It's about you and the people that you have in your immediate circle that truly make you unstoppable, not the equipment. Who's, who's driven to make sure that you succeed no matter what. I love it. I yeah. love it. I can, I, I love the emotion that's coming through there. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps as well. And I mean, that's what this is all about is connecting people, right? That's what this, the whole core value of this podcast is, is for me to connect with people for, for me to connect people to different people. Right. Um, and so I love that you, you touched on that because I think that that's so important. Um, I don't know how much time, do you have a little bit more time? I do. I've got another 10 minutes or so. So let's roll. Okay. Drop some. So, so talk a bit about goal digger. Right? I mean, the name kind of says goals. So goals is something that, you know, I've been really working on setting for myself and my business. Um, and I, I hope a lot of other business owners are doing that, especially right now. Talk to, talk to us a bit about, you know, goals. What, uh, mm. what, you t what you tell people, you know, how to set goals. them, what kind of Goals, man. I've got one goal right now. It's to figure out how to cut my hair properly. It's just <laughs> terrible. This, my, you can tell I haven't been. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been doing the self cut. Actually, it's not that bad. It's um, not that bad. By the way, huge shout out to the Stanley family, American pavement love it. specialists. They are awesome. They are awesome. It. We've yeah, guys, if, you, if you haven't yeah. seen, uh, if you haven't seen Judd's content, go over and check him out. He's he's all over. He's not hard to find. He's not hiding in a corner. Um, check out what he's doing. He's interviewed some really cool people. So American pavement. Yeah. So, all right, goals. Um, here's what I would say. Don't set yourself up for marathon goals. Set yourself up for sprint goals. I spoke about dopamine and clarity of your mind. And it's so incredible to hit a sprint goal, meaning a goal that is achievable versus something that may, you know, in 2020, what I, my goal is going to be to make a million dollars by the end of the year. Okay, fantastic. Good for you. And what does that mean? What does that framework look like? What, like, what, what's, yeah, what's up? Like, you want to build it, you want to build a million dollar company here coming up? That's awesome, dude. You know how many driveways that is at four or $500 a driveway? That's like 2,222 driveways or something, something like that. Yeah. So the, real, the reality of it is you would never physically be able to do that unless you had multiple crews, six crews that were out there going nonstop. So what I would say is sprint goals. A sprint goal may mean 
Well, for the month of May, I'm going to set a revenue goal for $78,000. And that revenue goal of $78,000 means I need to get out X number of proposals at this average order value um, with this conversion rate to yield that 78 grand to hit my goal. And here's how I'm going to do that and setting up that structure and plan. If you go to ask from, from the goal, basically. Work backwards from the goal 100%. Work backwards from a sprint goal, not a marathon goal, not a long distance. Man, I, I'll tell you what, I've never run a marathon. You know why I've never run a marathon? Because I haven't broken it up in my head into segments. If I could only do that and actually train for those segments and actually get that dopamine and phys that, that rush that I get for achieving goals, yeah. I would be on to my next one, on, on to my next one. I've got a good friend named Peter Ward. He's a hundred miler. He runs a hundred milers. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you can actually even like a hundred miles running a hundred miles. I can't really comprehend that. Yeah. I can, I can run 10 miles 10 times. It's a lot easier. Yeah. I can make, I can make a thousand dollars, but it's easier to make the hundred dollars times 10 times, right? To get yeah. to my thousand. So the reality of it is if you do have goals that you're setting for yourself, make sure that they're realistic. And when you're setting up those goals, work backwards from those goals, setting up your map, what it looks like your journey in order to achieve that. And if you have questions regarding like number of proposals that need to get delivered, if you're in the asphalt business and those kind of things, average order values, whether residential is the right market for you, whether small commercial is the right market, whatever it is, reach out to me and I've got yeah. all those numbers built out already. But you know, the reality of it is this, nothing happens overnight. It takes time and it takes a lot of sprint goals. I have multiple goals every single day that I set for myself. I'm like halfway through my goal on to my push-ups, right? I do 200 push-ups a day. I've done 100. When do I do them? I drop down every time I finish a call. I drop down and I do 20 push-ups. Why? It's a reminder for me, right? right? And so so it's kind of, you know, it kind of keeps me going going along the way. And I think that's important too is that work backwards from that goal but understand what the what the agenda looks like. Like what does that look like? Not just working backwards from a from a data perspective but what are the actual important action points throughout that goal journey if that makes sense when do you have to get out of bed in order to hit that many houses when do you have to how many crews do you have to have to make that feasible yeah i love that a lot, a lot more than just the numbers it's what does it actually look like yeah i love that awesome yeah. no i think that's good you know the the mile or the race of a uh, hundred miles is one 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 step at a time right so if you can figure out what those steps are then it is it is and and you know the the other thing too i think Louis, just to touch on this is is that a lot of people spend too much idle too much time idling and i see it a lot just idling and what i mean by that is i see a lot of people on social media not taking, uh, taking away anything about social media. Social media is how I am empowered to, I use those platforms to, power, to help people. Yeah. But, but the reality of it is I'm on social media every day, not only to just help people, the more I help people, the more business that it actually drives for us. So it's 100%. spirited towards help, paying it forward, but it's our business. Yeah. And so for people who are using social media to, to feel good from an entertainment perspective from a cool. government perspective <laughs> cool but just be totally honest and clear with yourself when you look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth at the end of the night that that time invested is for entertainment now if you're catching yourself being entertained on social media for three four five hours a day and that's not invested into your business and your sprint goals, you can bet your boots that your goals are going to less likely be achieved than if you actually were focusing on things that are action driven related to your goals. So 100%. that idle time, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this straight out, like everybody watching this, look in the mirror and be truthful with yourself, man, because nobody else will be. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll shine from the outside and be lighthouses for you. But the reality of it is, Take a good breath in and start conquering your shit. 
you know, stop, stop letting stuff interfere and stop going down rabbit holes that take away from what you're wanting to achieve. I see a lot of people talking about how 10 years later, they're only at this point and their competitive markets are only charging this per square foot and that there's just no way they can compete. This and that, this and that, this and that. Meanwhile, they're on social media for five hours every single day that is not driven towards their business, but then they start saying they're doing it because they want to help people. Okay, well, get out of the other business you're complaining about and start building a business about helping people. Or and then you're going to be pay good, for you. man. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's just be real. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I love it. By the way, I didn't say any names there for anybody who's watching, but I want you to look in the mirror because I care about you and I love you. Like, I really want, yeah, like, for people who are having that challenge, just go get it, man. Go do it or change it. Yeah, get someone to pay for your social media habit if you're going to do it. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I think we've just about used up the 10 minutes. So I really appreciate having you on, Judd. And uh, if you if you have you know one final thought before we, we peel off here, uh, go for it. Or, or yeah. a plug or anything. A plug, yeah. I mean, follow me. Follow me on social media. Asphalt Kingdom is U the U.S. global company. And then we have Action Seal that's Canada. But feel free to feel free to uh, to reach out anytime. In addition to that, just know that your journey is really, really short. Sorry to be so blunt. It's a really short journey that we have here. It may some days feel like days are long, but they're really not because you know, every night you go to bed and you're like, man, I can't even believe that day just went by. Like I remember my, my grandparents telling me that when I was a kid, man, you have no idea how fast days are going to go by when you get older. And now I'm yeah. catching myself telling my three-year-old that who we almost lost yeah. and appreciating these days every single day. So what I would say to you is this, this journey is, this journey is a very, very uh, short one. And the chances of you being alive are very, very slim right now. Like actually being born into this gift that we are experiencing right now, make the most out of it. I love it. Throw out the Coke cans. Throw out the bullshit that's interfering with your life, the toxicities of your life. Balance them out if you have them. Balance them. But live this thing, man. Live it. Look at us here, right? Like life, in the grand scheme of things, we're in the middle of this universe on this beautiful planet called planet Earth. And there's so much hate, so much love, so much fear, so much crap that we deal with every single day if you choose to deal with it by being plugged into media channels, being plugged into the things that might make you feel shitty or might make you feel good. Make the most out of your life. It's too, it's too, it's too short not to embrace it. That's what I want to leave you with for sure. I love it. Well, I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up. Um, once again, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. I'll just pause the recording. We can say some final words here and, and carry on our day. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.